Hello everyone, welcome to round seven, the final game of this chess.com blitz tournament. To be honest, right, so we've had six rounds. We've only got three points. We've only won three of them. But to be honest, I think in every game, apart from one, who I think he's currently in the lead with six out of six, my opponent in that game, we've been completely winning in the two of the three games that we lost, but we just ran out of time because I'm not used to playing with zero increment. So in the last game that we played, I really stepped up my speed towards the end and was able to quite comfortably, relatively comfortably, convert the position, which I was very happy with. Sorry, I'm just thinking a sec. But um, yeah, I need to make sure that I do this, do 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 that same thing in this game. Um, make sure that I'm playing quickly. But it's just frustrating that I don't have as many points as I probably should, just because I'm playing slowly. It's annoying. I'm just more of a classical player, as in I play more classical time formats, and also I prefer over the board to online play. But the end of the day, it's good to be used to quick chess and slow chess. You want to be good at both, ideally. Here we have a pretty standard Karo Khan. This e5 pawn is going to be weak for a very long time, probably. g4, I don't think, is a good idea for white. And I think this is just quite a comfortable position, to be honest. This knight may come to f5 and put pressure on the bishop. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's unexpected. Here, 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 here. That's good for white. I'm gonna go queen a5, just to put some pressure on various things in the position. Maybe rook c8 is also a good idea. Maybe that was a better move. I don't know. I'm not really worried about g4, bishop g6 because the knight doesn't have access to the d4 square to put pressure on my knight because the bishop is currently in the way. If something like g4, bishop g6, bishop to e3, trying to clear this square, I guess we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. But probably just rook c8 adding more defense to the knight. Something like knight to d4. Maybe a6 preparing d5 to break the pin. And then once the pin's broken, we can do some kind of exchange. Knight c6, get the bishop out. Castle should be very nice and easy. But with the Karo Khan, sometimes you just have to be a little bit careful with the way you configure your pieces, just so you're not blundering anything silly. Let's take this knight. Thank you very much. And let's go knight to f5. My opponent's structure is very questionable right now. I could fiend Keto and go bishop to g7 to put pressure on e5. Play h5 to stop my opponent trying to undermine my structure. I could also not do that. I could just continue with moves like rook to c8. Maybe even bishop b4 if I fancy it. To try and ruin my opponent's structure even further. There's kind of just lots of different things that I could do with this position. And not going to lie. I would expect that there's probably like a minus 1.2 evaluation right now. Because this is um, this is very nice for me. This is a very nice position. So let's see if we can continue playing well here. Bishop e3. Now I can't play this because my knight is pinned. But I think this is a good move. Because we're putting pressure on the knight, the queen and the king. And this knight is defending this bishop, which our queen is currently attacking. So my opponent could very easily slip up. Now he could take here with check first, but so that he avoids losing the bishop, but he doesn't. Now, even if he does that, his pawn structure is still going to get absolutely destroyed because I'm just going to snap off c3 very happily. Um, let's just castle. Let's just castle. Uh, 
Let's go king to h8. Because I don't want him to play bishop to f6. I mean, he's not actually threatening anything because my knight defends everything beautifully. But, okay, rook a to c8. Just potentially opening up lots of problems for my opponent. This should just be a very, very easy conversion here, to be honest. Put up a whole piece. And my opponent has basically nothing in this position. I guess this is quite um, a nice showing of how strong the Karo Khan can be if played correctly. Um, okay, well, that's just completely losing because... <laughs> C2 was already weak, and now you've just put your king in the line of fire of all of these pieces. So, yeah. White is going to lose. White is going to lose here. Huh, there might be some lines. Sorry. There might be some lines where the rook gets sacked as well. Um, Potentially. Although not in this scenario. Yeah, let's take with a rook. And we might as well double up. Because we're not being threatened on the king side in the slightest. So let's just trade. Trade. And I think it probably makes sense to force a queen trade here. Because we're just up. A, oh, and now we're up even more. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let's just not let this king. Oh, he can't get in anyway. We've got a barrier on the third rank. So that's fine. Um, my opponent resigns. That was completely losing. For my opponent and we end the tournament on four out of seven which i mean we should have done a lot better we played to a standard that was far better than that but time management was just absolutely horrific uh let's do a quick analysis of this game i mean it was kind of straightforward to be honest which i mean in an opening for the black pieces is kind of what you want my opponent plays this strange bishop to e3 line, where taking is the best idea. e6, knight c3 is a mistake, knight e7, bishop a4. Here, queen a5 is a problem. It's not a good move. Knight c8 is good. Okay, a6 is the best move, which I think is probably the most natural, trying to play b5. Queen a5, okay, not great. Take, though, knight f5, bishop e3. And here, what I was expecting, of course, this is actually um, a mistake. D4 is better. I should have seen that. But I was just trying to simplify the position a bit. Um, what I was expecting was this, where the material is equal, but white's pawn structure is, like, absolutely diabolical. He just can't do a thing. And black should just have, over time, oh, a7's hanging. Over time, what black should just have a major advantage, really. Because let's say some normal moves get played here. Um, what am I missing? Something like this. Um, I don't know. H4. No, that hangs a rook. Um, let's say like trades. Uh, something like this. Like The issue for white is that his pawn structure is just so terrible. That he just can't really do anything here. And black will always have an advantage. Even if the rooks come off the board and the minor pieces come off the board, my king is going to have a potentially a field day just because of how weak these pawns are and how strong my pawns are, which is one of the major features of the Karo Khan. But okay, my opponent gives me a free bishop. And then 
I mean, we just put pressure on the queen side, trade everything off, trade the queens off, and then my opponent gives me a bishop. I was a little bit cautious here because I didn't want to allow the king in. But it's fine because the pawns and the knight basically create a sort of force field against the enemy king. You can even extend it up to here if you want. And personally, I like visualizing this kind of thing because it means that I can just rest very easy knowing the king has no way in to the position. Because uh, it is basically a force field, right? But yeah, I mean, quite an easy Karo Khan game, to be honest. Can't be too um, uh, critical of it, I suppose. There was, some, there was an easier win early on, like Queen A5 wasn't the best move. I probably should have seen D4 in this position, but a, a good game. A good game, an easy game. And yeah, 4 out of 7. Should have been a lot better. Probably should have come in the top three. But that's just chess, in it? I need to work on my zero increment time format skill. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't seen the previous episodes of this tournament, the playlist is linked below. And if you have already seen them, then YouTube is going to be popping up a video right here that it thinks you're really going to enjoy. So I suggest that you check it out. I'll see you in that video.